Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage. Day two here in Vancouver. Beautiful Vancouver, the weather's great, the Cube is here at Open Source Summit, part of the Linux Foundation. I'm John Furrier, host with Rob Stretch, analyzing all the action, and we have a very exciting guest here, CUBE alumni who changed his jerseys on another team, Angel Diaz, Vice President of Technology, Capabilities and Innovation at Discover Financial Services. Angel, thanks for coming on, appreciate the time. Great Thank to see you. you. Nice to see you both again. Looking oh. good as usual, big yeah. smile. And what a fantastic <laughs> view. I know you can't see it. No, on the, the camera's other side. on it right now. Take a look at it. Oh, and it's beautiful. Uh, you've got the boats out there, you got the cruise ships, yeah, uh, yeah. just the planes landing. I yeah. mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, we're together again here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, IBM was a storied career there, open source, back here in open source. Discover Financial Services. Yep. We just talked about Finn Oss before with the executive director. Right. Kind of a vertical cloud. I mean, really, a, like to me, a really, uh, really relevant trend where expertise in a vertical can get the kind of scale and Linux Foundation endorsing a project that's a vertical focus. This is fascinating, I think this is going to be a thing. You guys are leading it with them in there. What's going on with Discover? Take a minute to explain your new role. Sure, and what's absolutely. going on with Discover, and we'll jump into the vertical. Well look, first of all, at Discover Financials, we have a card, we also have a bank, and a payments network. We should start with that. And you know, we spend our days trying to help us all what, achieve a brighter and brighter financial future. That sounds fantastic, but how do you do that? <laughs> well, there's a lot of technology involved, and that's about becoming digital. So what, the time that I spend is I lead the engineering teams uh, around our technology, uh, our innovation teams, and it's about improving our processes, so how we actually build software, uh, our people, helping our people level up, right? and of course the technology that supports all of that. And what is amazing, because you kind of hinted at this, right, in this, in this intro, is that this horizontal vertical thing is kind of blending, right? <laughs> this concept of end user versus builder, it's all kind of the same, yeah. right? And it's a cyclic. And many of the uh, open source principles that we've done over the years, we apply internally in how we do business at Discover. Well, it's super uh, valuable. Your role here in open source is really notable. Love that end user, they call you an end user, but you're a customer and also a contributor back end. So really fascinating model. I love that vertical focus and, and we've been saying on theCUBE, I think we might have talked about it way back in the day. Yeah. The, what the best thing about the cloud is it's horizontally scalable. Yes. But when you talk about vertical specialization, that's where AI comes in. You start looking at the data data that's unique to say the application or the audience or whatever, that's kind of in the vertical, you got the scale. So we got this new horizontal, huge cloud next gen happening, and then vertical specialization at scale. At scale. How do you look at that as a as leader? And as you go into an organization, you got to be fast, you got to be agile, so all DevOps kicks in. What's the, what's the North Star for you when you yeah. lead that organization? Well look, so I'm going to start from the top down. Okay. <laughs> right, and so, although I would love to start from the bottom, but let's start from the top <laughs> okay. because it, it is about connecting the day in the life of our customer. So the customer journey, how do you empathize? How do you understand this? You've heard of techniques like design thinking, doing empathy maps, that kind of stuff. But when you truly are able to iteratively, quickly understand the customer, you can then line up our product teams to those journeys. People talk about the journey, uh, you know, the transition from feature factories to product centricity. Well, yeah. no, we've done that like most folks. But then, once you've lined up the customer journey to the product teams, then you get into the technology, our platforms. And uh, we are way knee deep into our platform centric journey. So yes, looking at our applications, building microservices, et cetera, so we can have you know, teams that are aligned to actual services so they can kind of build independently, plug in and out, et cetera. But when you have that thread, yeah. right, going from the customer journey through a six to eight person team, through a particular microservice that they're implementing on the yeah. cloud, then you can move quickly and then take advantage of that vertical scalability, the stuff that we do yeah. specifically for our customers. I love that, that reminds me of the Steve Jobs quote where he's like, don't worry about the technology, look at the customer and then figure out what technology will work, and that's, exactly. that is exactly what's there. And that, that's state of the art right now, that's, people want that. Yeah. And the yeah. teams want that too, because product market fit kicks in too. Exactly. From the engineers like to see that, the product managers yeah. see it. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that it, you don't hear that a lot around here, right? At, at the Open Source Summit, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, other than the, the 
people in the corner with their working backwards from the customer uh, I had used to be there. So I, I know all those principles, but when you start to look at it, how are you bringing the, how is you, yourself and your teams bringing that? I, I saw your keynote and definitely was very team oriented keynote. Right, right. And, but how do you bring the customer to that, to yeah. the platform and to open source in general? Yeah, so, so let, me, let me give you a small use case and then I'll kind of try yeah. to unpack kind of our approach, which by the way is an open source approach to doing exactly that. So, say you're an engineer, right? And you're out you're, and, you're, and you're doing some performance tuning and you want to get the response time of clicking a button under a second. You would love that engineer, that team to understand that if they do that, we can actually incre increase our ability to do kind of refer a friend by 10% a real business impact right. and a real impact to the customer because they get benefit from that as well, right? So that thread, how do you go from response time on a server somewhere to an actual customer, uh, customer impacting type, yeah. of, type of thing? Well, the way you do that is through aligning your processes and being really deliberate on what you're trying to do. So we took an inner open source approach to how we define how we work. By Discover, for Discover. So a community, a plus one, guilds, we have uh, the Discover Technology Academy. That's where we host all of our knowledge, our blogs, articles, videos, tutorials. Those things come together through uh, an open source process where we define our business processes, our technology processes. We implement them, we define how we work within the teams, right? Uh, whether it's application engineering, infrastructure, security, et cetera. That's kind of how we did it. So it's the concepts of not just code, you know, the open source principle of code, right. but that of contribution and community. Uh, and that's how, now when you do it that way, it's a lot more fun than, than being told what to do and how to do it, right? There's different ways, right? You, you can go from the top and say, this is how you're going to work. Everyone lines up, or not line up, <laughs> right? They'll line yeah. up and not really line up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, and then you never make progress. Or we can say, hey, let's do it together, right? Let's figure out how we want to work, yeah. and then iteratively, iteratively and continuously improve. That's called the Discover Tech Academy? Yes, the Discover Technology Academy. And that's kind of our, our watering hole, our mechanism. Uh, we've got over 10,000 engineers, product owners, so those are business folks, in this academy. Contributing content <laughs> every day, learning, et cetera. And it's not just a place to like, throw the ideas in and agree on the ideas. It's also a place where, where um, we teach. We actually teach. So we have the concept of a dojo. I mean, that's not a... Uh, old term, right. everybody knows that, but yeah. we have a dojo team that goes in pairs and, and helps the teams get better at what they do, whether it's refining a backlog or doing performance tuning, going back, 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 uh, back to that example. Now, we recently actually took that and externalized it. So we did an announcement a couple months ago, the technology.discover.com, because it's great to learn and share and as an individual get better, you know, by succeeding together, working together, but it's even more fun when you do it on the outside. And that's when we joined FinOS, that's, that's why we're here at the Open yeah. Source Summit, is externalizing and, and being much more deliberate and focused on how we're partnering. The FinOS, we were talking about um, with Gabriel, who's executive director, yeah. how um, banking and financial services, it's a system. And, and we talked about the Silicon Valley Bank was a node and it failed and it impacts everything around it. So there's a need for connectedness in the community. Um, which is kind of like an operating system, if you think about it. So like yeah. in that FinOS, I'm very bullish on that direction. I think this idea of an open source uh, financial services, FinTech environment is, is a winning hand. It's early, but having that foundation, what's your view, because you guys are participating, yep. what's the vision there, what's the connective tissue between Discover, your work, obviously open source is it's a connection tissue, but where do you guys see that linkage connecting? Where's that, where's that transfer of IP yeah. and community? So I think it's two dimensions. Now first of all, all tech companies, financial services is no different, use 67% of their software is open source based. Like whether it's packaged, you get it from something, but literally the world is used, so that question's over, right? So we're like any other company, we're using open source. Uh, and to your point around end users, when you have an ability to get together as a community of practice, right? You use the technology a specific way, right? There's specific workload types, specific way. When you have the ability to really talk about those use cases, those patterns, et cetera, of how you use it, and then bring that back into anywhere in your stack, so Cloud Native Computing Foundation, wherever your, your, your technology, 
then that technology can be built to serve you better and ultimately your customers better, right? So I think the primary kind of, uh, you know, kind of usage of, benefit of, of our involvement in FinOS is around that. Is around being really explicit on how we're using it and how we can help evolve. You know, we talked about the time I spent in open source, right? I got a couple gray hairs, right? <laughs> Go early back to the days of standards. I actually participated in a lot of the original web standards with Tim Berners-Lee. The design point for HTML, when I was working on HTML or CSS or DOM, was the dissemination of math and science information. That's great, it's, it's a, it, I was passionate about that, right? But guess what, that's not quite how it was used yeah. in the end, right? So use cases can really, really influence the design of systems of standards, of software, et cetera. So I think that is, uh, is a fundamental. Uh, we had Fidelity Investments on um, earlier in the show yesterday, and they talked about apps and platform engineering. Yes. So it's the hottest thing. We've been talking about platform engineering for a while now, but it's going mainstream, now more in open source. I kind of equated to not the non-old definition, which was like SRE, Google SRE kind of role. It's evolved now into being more like IT, like a platform, sit guardrail, support people. How do you view, look at that whole platform, DevOps extension, yeah. platform engineering as a discipline? Because apps have platform features and dependencies. So yes. we were riffing on this idea of you can't have too many platforms. You can have a yeah. lot of apps. Yes. Well, What's your, is, uh, yeah. your, your, your view on that platform engineering yeah. as, a, this as, is, as a thing? It, it, is, it is such a, it's, well, you know, when I think of the pillars of our digital transformation, there's three pillars, right? How we look at the customers, I talk about techniques like design thinking, how teams are, the app teams are organized, right? And then the third is platform centricity. And uh, I've learned, you know, I've, I've, been, I've been on that journey for a <laughs> while, and uh, I can tell you a pattern that does not work, which is design it and build it. In other words, thinking, you know, thinking that you really understand what are the platforms you need up front, you're always going to get it wrong. Right? So I find that an opportunistic approach, as you are building applications, looking at areas of reuse and having that discussion in your processes and say, hey, guess what? I'm building a component to do consent. I consent to these legal terms. Hmm, maybe 20 of our other products do that too and it needs to be audible, auditable and, and stored, et cetera. That's a great example of a shared component or a shared platform component that we can use across. So, yeah. so that's kind of the approach that we've taken. We've, yeah. we've been building out our, plan. now there's some core things obviously yeah. that yeah. you have, that every organization has, developer services, application services, security, yes, we have those. But as you start moving up the Maslow hierarchy of platform, yeah. you know, beyond <laughs> the obvious, you know, authentication yeah. to more, you know, uh, uh, application semantic type of pieces, then we take an opportunistic approach to build out our platform, even at the business service level, yeah. like money movement or something like I mean, that. That's a very DevOps yeah. approach. I mean, if, it, if, if you do it three times, automated kind of philosophy. So there you you're, go. you're saying more of don't design the immaculate conception. Exactly. And then yeah. get yeah. use cases out there, apps that serve your customer. Because you're, you're, you're in a, a market where you have direct correlation to the app's benefit to money and customer satisfaction. Because they're using the app. Absolutely. It's critical to yeah. your business. Um, yeah. It's but interesting, there's, so there's a lot of dogma in platforms yeah. too, that I enter in, Rob. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, that, that's what I was going to go into is that you, you talked about kind of your three different uh, pieces, pillars, pillars that you yeah. have in, inside Discover. How does it work? Because there's defi definitely different regulatory and different control mechanisms they have to have in place and sometimes you know almost like firewalls in between the different organizations so how does that work with the fact that you are trying to have that platform and how do you get that reuse yeah yeah well so first of all the pillars that I talked about aren't organizational they're they're more constructs that we share across an okay. organization so you know we've got a card area a bank area and a payments area we're all one team these pillars of how we define the customer journey, how we define our product teams, how we do, that is common across. In fact, and what's great about that is that, you know, when you have common ways of working, our engineers can grow faster. They can build their craft, right? You can say, hey, you know what? I spent some time in payments. I want to go do the card. I'm going to move to card and learn something new. And they don't have to like, uh, those skills, 
Yeah. They don't have to relearn something different, right? So they can progress their career faster, which is fantastic. But let's talk about the regulation stuff. Yeah. You know, clearly there is, uh, it is super important, right, that we build software in a way that complies to whatever regulations they are, but more importantly, that is robust, traceable, et cetera, right? So as part of having that discipline, you can build in the discipline of those, uh, of those policies into software and automation, right? Yeah. And that's what we do. So it's not any more difficult than any other environment, it's just having that rigor in place so that you can always go back and, uh, and check and make sure you're doing the right thing. One of the things I want to ask you is, we ask all the guests, um, the main question of this event for us at theCUBE is the velocity of mm -hmm. change and momentum since February in AI has been phenomenal. And I've read more academic papers, they're coming out, great content's coming out from engineers on you know, AI, open AI, spawned a, a revolution. There's some leaked stuff that's come out at Meta and some other great machine learning. The time has come for the AI revolution the, the, everything's lining up, the compute, the storage, the infrastructure, machine learning, the large language models. AI is going to shake, we, we don't think it's going to crumble open source because it's, it's going to rock the world for sure in a, in a positive way, but also potentially there's some things to watch and monitor, you know, code pollution, misinformation, all that stuff's going to happen. AI is a good thing, it's going to change. What's your view on AI as you look at opportunities um, I mean, I'm sure you've got fraud detection to yeah. customer satisfaction. Oh, How do you yeah. look at the AI yeah. wave that's coming into open source and what should people be prepared for? Yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, AI's and AI techniques is something that I've been working on in my entire career. Like, you know, we talked about my yeah. time at IBM. I used to have the, the speech group, right? Yeah. So, and back yeah. then, yeah, we didn't have the same compute power we had now, so <laughs> you had a lot of if-then-else statements <laughs> in your code, right? So we've come a long way with models, but when you look at, at um, uh, AI applied in technology, I'll go to the Maslow hierarchy of needs kind of thing, right? You know, there's just obvious things that you can use, right? Whether it's fraud, creating great models, yeah. to better serve the customer, know your customer, all those type of things. We're using those techniques and we're evolving them and doing great research in the communities, right, to improve our way of doing that. Uh, I'm really excited about AI in the app dev world, right? Uh, AI in pipelines you know, AI in code consumption, right? Those type of things. You know, th that ability of being able to do your job smarter, faster, better together is very, very exciting. Because just like open source, it's a democratization of knowledge, right? So to the degree that you can kind of build on the shoulders, mm -hmm. you know, the right shoulders of the right giants, you can do things faster, better, better, AI better, AI scales better. intellect. That's right. It gets your ideas. Yes. It takes the human potential. Right, yeah, so that, that's exciting. So that's kind of where we're looking at it, right? We're trying to embed it in the right places well, uh, and, and improve uh, ultimately the lives of our customers. Well, it's been great to see you, and at the time it couldn't have been better. We were looking out on the ocean there and a container ship is here. So Ooh. I have to ask you about containers and, oh, and yeah. Kubernetes. As you look at cloud native, um, how active are you on the cloud native side? Uh, what's there, quick, quick commercial for what you guys got going on at Cloud Native. Oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, the next uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, Summit is in Chicago, and that's our house. Yeah. Discover headquarters. Home is territory, so we're home you know, field we're advantage. Top, top sponsor there, we're going to be there in force, a lot of our energy, I can't wait. You know, I, I actually helped kick off the Cloud Native Computing Foundation with Jim Zemlin and Craig yeah. from Google, so I have a soft spot for that. We, uh, we use Kubernetes and containers all over the place. In fact, for you know, most of, let's call our non-mainframe you know, mainframe type yeah. workloads, uh, we're pretty much microservice based everywhere, right? Uh, now, that doesn't mean that there isn't areas for improvement, right? Because containerizing a monolith I don't know if that's, you know, that's really <laughs> containers, right? right? So like most organizations. It is a container already, it's it, a monolith container. It's, it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big container. <laughs> right. It's a big container, I like that shit out there, right? So, but, so like my. We're, we're actually on camera right now, there's the container ship yes, going as through. It's, as it's going by. With the camera, love these remote cameras, yeah. they're awesome. So, so although I would say uh, we're pretty mature uh, in that aspect of our platforms, uh, like most organizations, going through platform centricity discussions, we are untangling and par par parsing out 
what exactly are the microservices that we want to build, right? And then more importantly, or equally important, how do they align to the team? So you have the autonomous, independent team, autonomous, independent, you know, my, and then how does that map to the other pillar, right? Which is the customer journey and what they're trying to do. And that's where we're at in our journey. Well, great call out on the KubeCon early days. We were there, present creation as that's well. That's right, that's um, right. Because we all moved from the open stack as that moved over, we saw that playing out. So, so far has come. It's been such great to see that industry just really kind of grow oh, yeah. and, and great work. Angel, great to see you again. And you've, you've been a real leader, pioneer, leader, and pioneer, it's hard to do. You could be a pioneer and not take arrows on the back. Oh, you got a few. We all yeah. got a few. <laughs> but I mean, you've been there. Thanks for uh, Thank being you. part of the cube, and we really appreciate you coming on the cube and being part of our community. And and uh, you're a great spokesperson as well. Thank you. You guys do an yeah. awesome work. So I'm proud to be here. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for all your support. Okay, cube coverage here as the container ships are going by here. The moment of of, of dev DevOps yeah. <laughs> infrastructure as code happening in the water. It's an unbelievable time. Cube day two coverage. We we'll right back after this short break.